Both my children have special needs. My daughter's autistic. She's high on the spectrum. And like I said, my son, his disorder is called um, SMA, spinal muscular atrophy. It's the number one genetic killer of children under the age of two. So I stay at home and take care of my son. He can't go to school and um, he's completely handicapped. So I attend to all his needs. It was at the end of the day after like, I think we had four appointments that day. And my son was sitting because he sits in one place until I can move him. So he's sitting in his feeder chair and he goes, mommy, can we go for a walk? And I just walked over to sit down next to him. And I was exhausted and I was like, I didn't want to tell him no, because you know, he didn't ask for very much. And it was a very simple request. So I was like, well, maybe later, son. We live on a hill, Maka Kilo. There's no way I was getting ready to walk that hill. I was 255 pounds. It was like, I don't know, three o'clock in the afternoon. So he looked at me with the saddest look on his face. And it just broke my heart when he said, that's okay, mom, I can't walk anyway. And I just felt my heart shatter into a million pieces because here's my son who would give anything for a chance to walk. And his mom who has functioning legs and can is just too tired from the day. And I just felt so ashamed. And I was like, no, something's, this is not right. And I, very next day, took myself to the Proc Center and I didn't know what I was doing, but I walked in those doors determined to do something. And that's how it began. You know, I'd heard a couple friends talking about the Proc Center, didn't really know what it was. And so we, we looked it up online, found the directions and we showed up and we did the, the walkthrough. I was like, oh, this would be great. And we actually, I actually thought we'd just come here for the pool. I don't think I really intended to ever use the equipment. I, how, when would I have time? My schedule's so busy. I average like 50 appointments a month. And I was nervous. I have never been out in public in my spandex and loose shirts. And there's no hiding the multiple belly rolls, your overlapping thighs, your cankles, your back fat. I mean, that's all on display. So the first part for me was just overcoming the embarrassment and just saying, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm not here to impress anybody. I'm not here to make friends. Uh, and so I did. I got on there and I was just proud of myself for doing 30 minutes on the elliptical machine. When I first seen Lori, she looked real timid. She looked real nervous. You know, my, my natural instinct is to, to approach and see if she needed any type of help, any uh, assistance with uh, maybe using a machine or, you know, some tips. Um, but she was nervous. And you, you, the look on her face, she didn't want to be there. But she knows she had to be there. So I think I approached Richie um, in April just to, to familiarize myself with other equipment. So I approached him. Um, he looked like the most approachable person, smiley, super outgoing, always waving and talking to everybody. Um, because again, I, I felt like a, a bit of a joke and I was nervous about approaching a personal trainer. You know, I wasn't sure what their response to me be, if they'd be annoyed because I was bothering them or taking up their time. Um, so I did, I approached Richie. He was like, hey, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but can I ask you a few questions? And he was like, sure, what do you need? I'm like, that's so nice. <laughs> it was a relief just to get that response. Her main focus was being able to carry her son. You know, getting out of bed, giving him a bath. You know, that was her main concern. As a parent, you know, it's, it's really hard to not be able to care for your kids. And that was her driving force. And during this time frame, I came to the realization, you know, if my son can be happy despite his many limitations and the hardships, then I can too. You know, there's no excuse. And with his disorder, um, you know, when we first got the diagnosis, it was like it shattered all our dreams. You know, when you have this vision of, of your children, you think of their future. And when the doctors tell you he doesn't have a future, it's grasping that concept and what you do in that time frame. And you want to quit. I mean, that's obviously that you, you know, you want to take the past of least resistance and you want to quit. And no, I, I can't. And I think of my children. I don't want them to quit and just know that they can do it. And I, like I said, once they understand they are capable of anything, they're stronger than they think, and they have so much potential, once they can realize their own potential, they can achieve anything. There are no limits, you know? And that's what I want them to grasp. So I have my next weigh-in, my last weigh-in for the year mark in March. That's when I started. 
Um, and so I'll see. Uh, hopefully I'll have gotten down below 184. But everything's changing. I uh, you know, went from a size 20. Should have been a size 22. But I was not going to buy a bigger set of pants. Not happening. And my son too. Mom, show me your muscles. So I'll flex for him and I go, these muscles? These? He's like, yeah. I said, these are for you, baby. He's like, yeah. So he loves that. Like, he just thinks that's the greatest. So then I, when I'm holding him, because I have to carry him everywhere. And I'm carrying him. Oh, oh my goodness. Mommy needs to work out some more. I need to get strong so I can carry you. You're stronger than Mommy right now. And he just loves that. He just cracks up. And, he, and it is nicer that I can lift him with ease now and do the things that I wasn't able to do. Fit on a slide with him at the park. I was too big to do that. Um, walk that hill. He made me walk all the way down to the Walmart to get some french fries. And we did, and, and it was okay, and it was a lot of fun. So I get to spend more quality time with my son. He gets to participate in my workouts. If I stop at the park to do sit-ups, he'll tell me, keep going, keep going. <laughs> ah, it hurts, that's okay. So yes, yeah, it's, it's been really a lot of fun. People think, oh, I don't have time, I don't have time. Honestly, nobody has time. But you make the time for the things that are important to you. you. Make you time for your friends, for your family, for church, whatever it is that you you value. And so, for me, I have to make the time to work out. And don't get discouraged. You fail. I fail constantly, but you gotta just pick yourself back up, dust yourself off, and go. You know what? I'm gonna try again. And eventually, you succeed.